When federal agents seize cash at airports across the country, we rarely get a look at what happens next. Sometimes that's an interrogation. Tonight, we're getting a look at one of those interrogations that happened here inside the Raleigh Airport last year, where a federal agent seized $115,000 from a passenger. That interrogation quickly turned into the federal agent looking to make a deal. I'm like, I just got robbed. I can't believe it. I just got robbed, like, without a gun. Like, I've been robbed before, but, like, you know, without no gun. Like, just, it was the nicest robbery ever. Ramon Lyon strolled through the Raleigh Airport last June to hop on a flight to California. He had $115,000 in his luggage. Cash, he says, he had to purchase machines for his gaming business in Raleigh. Airport surveillance video shows the TSA screened Lyon's luggage, then grabbed his bag after an x-ray revealed cash inside. The TSA officer walked Lyon's bag to a table where a Raleigh airport officer joined in. Like thousands of others who have had their money seized in an airport, Lyon didn't know at the time the TSA was on the line with a federal agent. Good morning, sir. How are you? How are you doing? I'm good. Lyon landed in an airport interrogation room. Officers and the TSA searched his bags there and photographed the cash inside. An hour and a half later. Raleigh Durham Airport Police Officer Aaron Woodleaf walked in. Woodleaf, a civilian airport officer at times, I mean, he pulled out like 10 badges, becomes a fed when he needs to. The TFOs get silver badges, we don't get the cool guy on gold badges. Passports officers, so we're duly sworn. Um, it's kind of crazy. We got jurisdiction beyond our normal property when we need to. Woodleaf questioned Lyon about his trip, why he didn't have a return ticket, and why he did not have a hotel booked in California. Mentioning no other evidence, the agent told Lyon he wasn't leaving with his money. I think there's there's probably some legitimacy to your, to your claim, but based on just some of these findings, I'm, I'm going to seize your money um, under administrative seizure for homeland security, and we're going to give you about 60 days to come up with an appeal to be received some stuff in the mail, and the U.S. Attorney's Office will be giving you a chance to provide legitimacy for your money. Um, you know, it's, it's just something, something that it's feels like there's something more here. You got a last minute purchase on your ticket. You don't have any accommodation. It's just odd. Nothing's wrong with it, but I just feel it's odd. Agent Woodleaf told Lyon he planned to open one or more federal investigations into his personal life, his business and finances, and he'd get search warrants for his cell phones. But then offered Lyon a way to buy out of those federal investigations. We do have abandonment forms here as well. If you choose to forego the, the seizure of the phones and any investigation, you can walk away from that money. I don't know. You, those are all your options. Those are all your options. I'm going to seize the money, but if you want to walk away from a federal investigation um, that's linked to the money, those are your options. If we if we do a federal investigation, I'll, I'll probably end up figuring out your favorite color, your favorite food, we're looking at like your bank account, that kind yeah. of investigation. That's just, a, it's another scare tactic that they use to get you to do what they want you to do. To give um, up that money without a fight. To give up that money without a fight. Yeah, sign right here and walk out the door. If it appears that government agents are asking people to sign over money to avoid a federal investigation, essentially sign this money over to us and we'll pretend this never happened, how is that fighting crime? It's not. William Pruden, an asset forfeiture attorney in Raleigh, represents Ramon Lyon and Cody James. Pruden says these seizures put innocent people in an impossible spot, having to prove to the government they're not criminals. In all of the cases that you've handled where currency has been seized at an airport, how many of your cases resulted in a criminal prosecution? None. Not a single one? None of my civil asset forfeiture cases, even outside of airport. That appears to be the norm. Homeland Security data shows in the more than 30,000 cash seizures between 2000 and 2016, prosecutors filed a criminal action in less than 10% of those cases. 
In court filings, the feds attempted to connect Lyon to a California to the Carolinas drug trafficking investigation. But the government never claimed Lyon was the subject of that investigation, only that the amount of money he had, how he packed it into his bags, along with having two cell phones, was consistent with the drug trafficking techniques. Lyon says he knew he wasn't leaving with his cash as soon as agents pulled his criminal record. Lyon has a criminal record dating back to 1993, a record littered with multiple felony drug convictions, weapons charges, and eluding arrest. But his last convictions happened a decade ago. Once he saw that I had a record, it was just open game. I was open game for him. He like, I'm about to have a field day with this guy. Despite the rap sheet, Agent Woodliffe wanted to make Ramon Lyon a deal. Diamond, uh, nobody from the U.S. Attorney's Office will contact you, and we won't be um, seeking any type of investigation. It ends, it ends when we post on that. The investigative tactics displayed in this video have caused law firms like Dan Albans to sue to force the government to prove its allegations before taking things that don't belong to it. Is it more about fighting crime or is the outcome more about scooping up this money and somewhere along the way the original intent has been lost? This is definitely about raising revenue and not about fighting crime. I mean, I knew they was, I knew they was going to see it, you know, but I didn't think, I, like I said, I didn't think I was doing anything wrong. Fifteen months later, federal prosecutors have not charged Ramon Lyon with a crime, but still have his money. Did they accuse you of being tied to money laundering or drug trafficking? Yeah. Did they prove it? No. Are you being prosecuted? No. What's going on here? I got robbed. They just robbed me. That's what's going on. Not a single agency conducting these seizures would talk with us about them. Homeland Security did send us a statement saying its ICE investigations deal with money laundering that supports transnational criminal organizations by targeting courier networks that use the nation's airports to conceal and transport illicit proceeds. DHS again though would not agree to talk with us about any of these cases. There is federal legislation that could end these seizures if the government cannot prove the people they're targeting are indeed criminals. Congress Congressman Tim Wahlberg, a Michigan Republican, has once again this session introduced the Fifth Amendment Integrity Act. Civil asset forfeiture has been used too many times to seize, forfeit, and indeed profit off the property of Americans without even charging them with crimes. Well, this FAIR Act could eliminate these seizures for people where the government cannot provide clear and convincing evidence of a crime. But this legislation has stalled in congressional committees. Since each of these federal agencies fall under the executive branch, I asked the White House for an interview. President Biden was a co-author on this 1984 legislation that allowed these seizures, but no one in the Biden administration would agree to interview with us. From the Raleigh-Durham International Airport, I'm Jody Barr. Incredible investigation. And Jody has put together a more in-depth article online. You can find surveillance videos and the TSA's response on fox46.com.